Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to cast this solid aluminium tail hammer design slingshot out of aluminium scrap. In a previous video I showed you how to take scrap aluminium like this and cast it into pure aluminium ingots like this and the link to that video will be in the description down below. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to take these pure ingots and melt them down into a solid aluminium slingshot like this. You could avoid the ingot step to save a bit of time but your slingshot wouldn't be as pure and might have a couple of imperfections. However, if you haven't already seen that previous video and you're new to casting, it explains a lot of information about different crucibles to use, how to cast the aluminium into ingots, which is really useful for overflow, and also quite a few safety tips. It also explains a little bit more about the forge, and I'd really recommend that you go and check it out if you haven't done casting before. The slingshot was cast using the lost foam casting method, which involves making a mould out of foam and then casting it in aluminium. The method is a very good method to use if you don't already have a copy of the part that you want to cast. So say I didn't already have a slingshot like this and I wanted to make a completely new original one, this is a very good method to use. Not only is this method good for casting slingshots, but you can also use it for casting other parts. Maybe if you are accurate enough you could use it for casting engine parts, which a lot of people seem to ask about for some reason. But it would be much better for casting something either like a slingshot or maybe a crossbow trigger mechanism or just metal parts like that. As you can see here, I've had a lot of different attempts at casting slingshots and I've used a lot of different methods and it's taken me lots of trial and error to get to this point. So don't be discouraged if your first goes don't really go as planned since my first goes were kind of failures. If you want to see any of these past videos, even just on the failed slingshots so you can learn from my failures, then the link will be in the description down below to my metal casting playlist where all of these videos of these slingshots will be. Past tutorials I've showed you how to cast both of these aluminium slingshots here and this was just using a simple sand casting method but you do already need a previous slingshot that you want to cast. In the future I'm going to be showing you how to do a more accurate method of this using green sand casting and this is the half finished slingshot. It will soon end up like this slingshot once I've finished it and the tutorial will be up hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So let's get started on making the slingshot and enjoy the video. The very first step is making the mould, and since this is going to be lost foam casting, we're going to be making the mould out of foam. The foam which I'm going to be using today is going to be some green sort of modelling foam or art foam. I'm using this since it's a little bit more rigid than other foams which you can use. And the other types which you can use is pretty much just polystyrene, the white polystyrene which comes in packaging. Although it is a little bit more delicate, I have had successful results with it in the past and you can definitely use it. Since this foam is not quite thick enough to make a full slingshot, I'm going to be cutting out my design twice and then laminating both layers together using a hot glue gun. So the design which I'm using is going to be my tail hammer design and link will be in the description to my website where you can find this design. And this is what a finished one of them looks like and this is just a cast aluminium one that I did a while back in a different method. For cutting out the foam, I'm going to be using my scroll saw since it's got such a thin blade and it can cut corners really well. Since foam is really soft, you can pretty much cut it out with anything that's a saw. You can just use old blunt and hacksaw blades or just thin pieces of wire. But most people suggest using a hot wire cutter. I would also suggest using that if you had one. But instead, since I don't have one, a scroll saw is the next best thing. So this is what the two pieces look like after I've cut them out. And as you can see, they're going to laminate together very nicely. To glue them together, I'm just going to be using a hot glue gun, since the glue from the hot glue gun is also disintegrated by the aluminium, just like the foam. So now the two layers are joined together, I'm going to shape this foam model to look roughly like this slingshot, and then it will be ready for casting. For the shaping, I'm going to be using a combination of coarse metal files and some rough sandpaper. And I'm going to be shaping the slingshot to the final shape that I'd like it once it's cast in the aluminium. You need to make sure to get rid of most imperfections now because it's much easier to get rid of imperfections in the foam than it is once it's cast in solid aluminium. This is what the foam mould looks like after I've finished shaping it and it's all rounded and pretty much perfect to how I'd like it fits my hand quite well. As you can see it's larger than this slingshot in the ergonomics very slightly just because as the aluminium cools it's going to shrink and also I want a slightly larger slingshot. But the surface is still quite rough so I'm going to be using some sandpaper to try and clean it up. 
For this, you don't want to get it like super shiny. You're just trying to make sure that there's no deep scratches left behind that would be cast. There's no need to sand it all the way up to 400 grit. So now the slingshot's pretty smooth and it fits my hand really well. Now it's time to make the sprue which comes out the bottom so that I can pour the molten aluminium in and have the full shape of the slingshot. So what I've done is I've taken this piece of foam and just cut a slot into it and filed it out so that it fits this shape of the slingshot like this. And that's going to connect and then this can poke out of the end of the mould. You can pull the aluminium in and it'll sink through and cast the entire slingshot. Now it's time to cast the slingshots and the first thing that I've got to do is turn on my forge. This is the forge which I'm going to be using, it's just a simple coal or charcoal powered forge. If you want to know how to make a forge like this, there's a great tutorial by Grant Thompson, the King of Random, on his channel and I'll put a link in the description down below to his video. This forge is a very simple forge that just works by putting the fuel, either coal, charcoal or smokeless fuel inside there and then turning on the blower which supplies lots of oxygen to the fire and makes it get really hot. So while the forge is heating up, it's time to prepare the mould and the way that this is going to work is I'm going to bury the foam inside some sand. You can pretty much use any sand for this but you want to make sure that it's quite dry and fine. The finer and drier the sand is, the more gaps it's going to take up and the more accurate your casting is going to be. I'm just going to pack it around up until about here and then I'll be done. So I filled the mould completely up with this really nice fine sand and then I've put basically a soup can with the end cut off so that it's just an open steel cylinder and then I've put the end of the sprue coming out here so I can pour the metal in here, this will hopefully catch any overflow that would be dangerous if it wasn't caught and then it will hopefully go to the mould and cast the slingshot. So once the fire gets hot enough I can put the crucible inside and as you can see right down at the bottom already it's glowing so that's almost hot enough to melt the aluminium. In the previous casting video where I showed you how to cast aluminium ingots I already explained all of the different crucible options and the crucible that I'll be using so for more information go and check out that video the link is in the description but in short I'm basically just using a three kilogram graphite crucible bought off eBay. So now the forge and the crucible are up to temperature I'm going to melt down the aluminium ingots which I cast in the previous video. I'm just going to put them into the crucible and leave them for a couple of minutes to melt. Once they're molten, I'll then add in more. With this graphite crucible, I like to fill it until the entire crucible is full with molten aluminium, just so I can make sure I've got enough for the entire piece. So now the crucible is full all the way up to the top, and that's completely molten aluminium. Now all I need to do is add a borax flux to try and get rid of all of the impurities. So this is my borax flux and it's borax decarbohydrate. I got this off eBay for only a couple of pounds and I'm just going to take a little bit of it with this spoon and put it into this aluminium foil which I can then fold up. I can then push this into the middle of the crucible and hopefully it will deposit the borax flux when it melts and then this will bind to all of the impurities, make them rise to the top so I can scoop them out with the spoon. Now the crucible's full of pure molten aluminium, it's time to cast it, so I carefully grip it with my crucible tongs, take out and pour it into the foam mould. I need to pour steadily and the most important thing is to continue pouring, even though there's loads of flames coming up from the foam. Also make sure that you don't breathe in any of these toxic foam fumes. I then pour any of the excess into some aluminium ingots just in an old baking tray. So just going over this once more because it's probably one of the most important steps of the process is you need to pour carefully but steadily and the most important thing is to continue pouring even when there's fire coming out and because if you don't pour enough aluminium in then the entire mold is just going to collapse on itself and it'll fail. Then you can leave it to cool but it's very important not to try and pull it out too early because as you can see now it's still molten even a couple of minutes later. So as you can see the aluminium is completely solid, now I can use some pliers to take out the sand, hopefully it's worked. 
Oh, looks like it might have. Yeah, it looks good. So this is what the slingshot looks like once I take it out of the mould and I think it looks pretty good. The only imperfection is this sort of bump coming out here but that's absolutely fine. I think what must have happened was maybe some of the sand got eroded away or I kind of didn't pack it around enough in that area but the can was sort of placed here and it was almost touching this bit here so maybe that sort of interfered with the mould there but it doesn't matter because it's a bump going out I can just file it away. First things first, I'm going to take a hacksaw and make two cuts like this, get rid of the bottom bit which was the sprue. This can just be melted down again into more ingots and then eventually more slingshots. So this is what this bottom of the slingshot looks like once I've cut off this entire end piece. It actually took a little bit longer than expected because the aluminium is quite thick and I didn't quite realise how hard it would be to cut but it's finally done and it looks pretty much like the shape that it was before. Now I've just got to deal with this lump here and then I can start to make the slingshot. So now I've dealt with that lump and it sort of looks back how it did before and it fits into my hand quite nicely. I just need to sort of thin this area out a little bit more. What I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to start to file everything using this really coarse bastard file that removes the aluminium really quickly. And I'm basically going to expose all bare aluminium, none of this black material that was left on the surface from the casting. And I'm going to refine it to the exact shape that I want it. This is by far the process that takes the longest in this entire casting process since you need to file away basically an entire new slingshot out of the old one and you need to make sure that it's the exact shape that you want before you move on to sanding. Another important thing to watch out for is to try and make sure that the slingshot is completely symmetrical. So this is what the slingshot looks like after I've filed it into shape and I think it feels really nice when I hold it and I've basically got almost all of the imperfections out apart from this small one here which I'm going to probably be able to file out and also this one here which is really annoying because it actually goes in probably about a quarter of a millimetre and filing that out would change the shape of this quite a lot so I don't think I'm going to be able to get that one out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some rotary sanding tools and I'm basically going to get rid of all of the deep scratches left behind by the files. So these are the rotary sanding drums which I've got and they just clip into a drill bit like this and then this just erodes all of the metal away and these are only a couple of quid off Amazon. On top of this you could also just use uh, some sandpaper wrapped around a file or some diameter wooden dowel that are the right diameters for the curves that you want to sand. Although this is much quicker and takes much less effort. Also from now on I'm just going to be using some wooden vice jaws because these metal vice jaws actually leave the imprint of the cross hatching or these bolt holes into the slingshot and I don't want that because this is such soft aluminium it's actually quite easy to dent. So this is what the slingshot looks like once I've finished using the Dremel sanding drums on it and it's really really smooth now, really nice to hold and you can feel already that it's getting quite smooth and shiny and also you can see there's no deep scratches left behind by clogged up files. So before we move on to the laborious process of sanding the slingshot all the way up, there's one thing that we've still got to do first before we can do that and it's basically take a rat tail file like this and then file groove all the way around this fork like this and that's going to be the band attachment method for the slingshot bands. So this is what the fork tips of the slingshot look like once I've filed the groove just using the regular rat tail file. As you can see I filed it in quite deep because there's no issue with strength on these forks considering they're solid aluminium and also so that the bands will easily be protected inside there. 
So now we can start the sanding process and I'm actually quite excited for this one because if I do sand it up to a mirror finish successfully, it'll turn out really nice. So for sanding the slingshot up, the only thing which you're really going to need is just going to be some sandpaper. And to get this high, basically all that I'm going to be using is just using a combination of wet and dry sandpaper and these sanding sponges, and I'll explain them later. Wet and dry sandpaper is much better than just regular wood sandpaper, since it's both finer and it lasts longer. So now onto sanding sponges. These are some sanding sponges which I bought off eBay. Loads of people ask me how I can buy them. Can you send me the link to where you got your sanding sponges? Just go on eBay and at least for definitely for the UK eBay, all you've got to do is search sanding sponges or sanding blocks and they're really cheap. I prefer sanding sponges over regular sandpaper because you can get a lot more purchase in your sanding and also they last a lot longer and they give a nice fine finish since they're so padded they don't dig into the metal at all. This is an old worn down pair that I'll be using for finishing but for starting off I'll be using this set of brand new sanding sponges that I recently bought and also this set of 250 sanding pads. So it's time to start sanding up the slingshot and I'm going to start as low as 80 grit and work my way all the way up to 600 grit and 1000 grit. When sanding metal I find that it's really important to spend a lot more time on the lower grits than the higher grits because with the lower grits you can remove old scratches and then you can move on to the higher grits and one of the biggest mistakes that I've found that I've made and I still make it at the moment is to move on too quickly through the sandpaper because you may think that you've got all of the scratches out and then you go up to the next grit of sandpaper and find that you've barely got any of them out and you're going to have to keep on working down and it's just inefficient. So this is what the slingshot looks like after sanding it to 180 grit just using this normal sandpaper like this and it's pretty worn down but it's left a really really nice finish on the slingshot and if you want you could just leave it like this but now I'm just going to be using a combination of all of the sanding sponges that I showed you earlier and I'm going to be going all the way up to 600 and 1000 grit. Pretty much the rule that I've found with sanding is the more time that you spend on it, the higher finish your slingshot's going to have or whatever part you're making, especially with metal and this basically means that if you spend a lot of time on the lower grits and then a lot of time on the higher grits you're going to come out with really nice results and just don't rush it because if you spend this much time trying to get here there's no point in rushing the final finish making it look rubbish. So this is what the slingshot looks like after finished sanding with the sanding sponges and as you can see it's pretty smooth now and in some places it's getting up to a mirror finish and it's looking really nice. If you look closely there's no deep scratches or gouges in the metal and it's now time to move on to buff buffing and polishing. So for buffing, I'm going to be using this buffing wheel on a bench grinder. This originally had a sanding belt attachment on this side, but since I've got my new sander, I don't need this, and I took it off and attached this buffing wheel, which is much more useful. I'm going to use it much more often. I'm just going to be using some white buffing compound, and although this is made for hard metals, it works really well for aluminium, because I've used it in the past. If you don't have a buffing wheel, you can buy these for only a couple of pounds off eBay, and they just go into the chuck of a drill if you don't have a bench grinder to attach them onto. Also if you are even cheaper than that you can just use buffing compound or brasso or something, put it on a piece of tissue paper and just rub it onto the metal but it's less effective and doesn't give as good long lasting finish as this. So this is what the slingshot looks like after polishing and it's so reflective you can actually just see the camera in the reflections and it's really nice and I'm really happy with the finish and it's like that on every single surface. What the finished slingshot looks like, I banded it up with some double layered tapered TheraBand gold and this is specialised to shoot 15mm steel ball bearings. Pretty happy with how it's turned out, it's pretty much mirror reflective as you can see and I think it's a really nice ergonomic and comfortable shape, can't wait to shoot it. The slingshot shoots and performs really well. It's so comfortable in your hand that you barely even feel a strain on your wrist when you pull back the bands. And even though I've got some quite light tapered bands on there, I could easily upgrade it to some really, really heavy bands since this solid aluminium frame would take hundreds of kilograms even just to strain it. Plus it's virtually indestructible and waterproof and any fork hits will only leave a slight dent that could be sanded out quite easily. Even with these lightweight bands, the slingshot's still got quite a lot of power behind it as well. So I just think that the slingshot performed really well and I'm really happy with it.
If you want to see any more Cast Aluminium projects or just any other slingshot or weapon related projects, check out my channel and subscribe for future videos. There will be a link in the description as always to my metal casting playlist where you can see all of my casting aluminium videos. If you have any suggestions on how you think that I can improve this method, please post any comments that you have in the comments section down below. If you also have any suggestions on what you think I could cast in the future other than slingshots, I'd really appreciate them since I've done quite a lot of slingshots now and I'm looking for some other projects. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please hit the like button down below and subscribe. If you did enjoy my video, you might like some of my others and you can see previews of them here. If you want to find out the full videos, then go to my channel and check them out.